My name is Helen Phelan. I am the Associate Professor of Arts Practice at the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance at the University of Limerick. When people think about singing and dancing or playing a musical instrument, they don't always think of these things as ways of doing research. When we think about research, we often think about academic dissertations and citations, and a lot of people know of people who are doing research about music or dance. But can performance, can music, dance, theater be research? There's a long and a short answer to that question. The short answer is yes. And the Arts Practice PhD at the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance at the University of Limerick is one of these pioneering programs that invites musicians and dancers and performers to do research about their own creative practice. The longer answer to that question, at least for me, is an answer that goes back at least 30 years and it's one of the reasons why I'm particularly excited and committed to this way of doing research. 30 years ago, I was an undergraduate student of music. For as long as I can remember, I've been singing and playing the piano. And there was never any doubt in my mind but that what I would study in the university would be music. I can still remember my excitement and my anticipation arriving on campus that first day and getting my timetable. And then my immediate confusion when I didn't see my piano lesson on my schedule. Over the next few days, I began to panic, wondering had I forgotten to register for some critical module. Eventually, I summoned up the courage to ask one of my colleagues about this, and they explained to me, you don't play music at a university, you think about music. At a university, you can study the history of music, the sociology of music, music theory, music composition, but the performance of music happened in a school of music or a conservatoire. I didn't realize at the time that there was nothing unusual about this, but nor did I realize that a seismic change was about to happen in universities. Since the formation of the university in the Middle Ages, universities had prioritized thinking over doing. But thanks to scholars like Howard Gardner, who had introduced us to theories of multiple intelligences, we now understood that intelligence wasn't just mathematical or linguistic. The forms of intelligence that have been traditionally valued and prioritized within universities, we realized that intelligence could be musical, it could be gestural, it could be somatic or spatial. And the very first university in Ireland to recognize this new so-called intelligence of art was the University of Limerick. With the foundation of the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance at the University of Limerick, the first Irish university insisted on the equal recognition of theory and practice in all of its programs. When I was invited to become a faculty member at the Irish World Academy, one of the things that I was asked to do was to lead a consultative process with a group of international artists and scholars, which would result in the first practice-based PhD at the University of Limerick, which offered a structured program and invited professional performers to come and do research around their own creative practice. The Arts Practice PhD at the University of Limerick invites musicians and dancers and performers into a creative space to explore and reflect on their own practice. 50% of the PhD program involves professional practice and 50% involves reflection around that practice. It's a way of doing research that recognizes that there are some aspects of human intelligence that cannot be translated into literate or numeric forms of knowledge, but must rely on the sonic and on the gestural. It's a way of doing research that recognizes that there are aspects of human knowledge that cannot be accessed except through the doing of them. It recognizes that only a singer can understand the embodied experience of creating sound. It understands that only a dancer can recognize that intimate relationship between muscle and memory that can create movement. It recognizes, as the poet Mary Oliver reminds us, that poetry, for example, is first and foremost an emotional intelligence. It's a space she describes as a kind of a field or a temple, a space into which we must walk in order to feel its essence. 
the intelligence of art recognizes that there are some things that can only be articulated beyond the realm of words. This way of doing research is not without its challenges. In a famous essay called The Butterfly Unpinned, dancer and scholar Christopher Bannerman likens the attempt to study through performance to trying to study a butterfly in flight. Traditional ways of studying the butterfly would involve mounting it and pinning it to a board. This provides certain advantages in terms of our ability to look at and to observe that butterfly, but of course it is already dead. Studying the butterfly in flight is like trying to capture the essence of knowledge in movement. It's what Patrick Kavanagh calls snatching out of time the passionate transitory. Doing research in this way guarantees no dead certainties, but it does invite us to engage in the live, dynamic experience of performance. This way of doing research in the performing arts is now globally recognized and established across most of the universities in Ireland. It is a way of research that has recently been recognized by the Irish Research Council, and scholars at the University of Limerick have been among the first recipients of funding for arts practice research in music, dance, and circus arts. Hi, my name is Shane Houlihan, and I'm an IRC scholar in the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance. My PhD, I'm looking at how we can develop and document creativity in the bodies of high-level circus artists. So one of the things that the, has been great this year is I've been able to go abroad. So I did Montreal for four weeks, Stockholm for four weeks, and Melbourne for four weeks. And in each of those institutions, they're, the, they're all high-level circus artists. So they're training people to work for the likes of Cirque du Soleil, Cirque du Secours, Circa, and so on. So I go in and I follow students and staff for four weeks and I'm writing my notes and do my pictures and so on, interviews, all that kind of thing. So that's been my first one because I want to be able to tell the story of how this is done in the world at the moment. From this then I go into the next phase which is next year and I'm looking at performance and my first one is looking at doing a two-week workshop with uh, performers looking at how they can make work on circus in an elevator, a confined space, so a two meter by two meter box that opens between 30 and 60 seconds and can they tell a story in that short space of time be it juggling, be it on stilts, being it doing trapeze in a very small space so there's a challenge to it, it'll be interesting um, the second performance then is looking to be a little bit bigger it's bringing um, 14 circus artists together for six weeks so six of those will be Irish and then the rest are international from all over the world. They will work with me for four weeks. Then the final two weeks we move to the National Gallery of Ireland where we're going to work with eight vocal artists and we're going to respond to the space. So you walk into the space and you look at the, the building. The building itself is going to do something to the body, right? Um, but similar to the artwork, you look at the artwork, what's to make you think of? Where does your body go with that? How do you respond to it? And at the same time, you've got the public walking on by. And they're going to go, what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking at this. Oh, well, what do you see? I see this. And so on. And we bring it all together and we do a big show with spectacle um, at the end of it. Uh, all of that <laughs> is going to be filmed as well. And I make a documentary film of the full process. And those two performances form half of my PhD submission which is the unusual bit. The other part is the normal side, the normal side, which is the written report that goes in there, the thesis that you hand in. And then I have to defend both the thesis and the performance about my practice as a circus artist and a teacher and a facilitator of learning and how I mind the space and how I make the work and how I help really to make myself invisible. I win if the students don't need me by the end of the process. If they're able to create their own work and do so in a really investigative, interesting way.
My name is Kathleen Turner and I am studying the PhD in Arts Practice at the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance in the University of Limerick. I'm studying the role of community music in a process of social regeneration here in Limerick City. I work primarily in a music programme called Sing Out With Strings with the Irish Chamber Orchestra and we work with four to twelve year olds throughout the city, 300 children here in the city and, uh, and we look at how music making and community music can really actively make a change in the identity of our city and also in the, in the identity of ourselves as people. A key aspect of uh, arts practice research is learning and, uh, and researching and developing knowledge through the arts and through our own artistic practice. So I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter and I'm a community musician and I'm exploring different ways of expressing community change through my own music making and through the music making that I do with the children and Sing Out With Strings. My name is Matthew Noon and I'm doing a PhD Arts Practice in the Irish World Academy in the University of Limerick. And my research is a practice-based exploration of Indian and Irish music and the possible sympathies between them. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing that in the Irish World Academy in particular is because I can do that through practice and through, um, my, through performance. So I play an Indian instrument called the Sarod, which is a 23-stringed lute and I've been exploring how to play Irish music on this instrument and sort of documenting that both in an academic way and also um, through creating performances. I was recently in India in 2014 with Martin Hayes and Dennis Cahill and um, we did a two-week tour um, across, across the country uh, and again, the, even though this wasn't framed as an uh, academic output, um, it, it did feed back into my own research. So, I see what I'm doing as both academic and practical and also having a much more global reach in terms of the performative element. It seems to me that arts practice research is another excellent example of how the University of Limerick is pioneering new pathways into knowledge and how this in turn is generating innovative ways to approach teaching and learning. It's a way of doing research that makes me proud to be part of this place of seeking. So if you're a performer looking for a creative space within which you can reflect on and do research around your own practice. The Irish World Academy at the University of Limerick knows that it will be a richer and more intelligent place for having you here with us. My name is Helen Phelan. I'm the Associate Professor of Arts Practice and Programme Director of this programme. Please do contact me if you're interested in learning any more about the PhD in Arts Practice at the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance, University of Limerick.